Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the Newbie Drone Hummingbird V3. And the most outstanding feature about this is probably the price. Should be launching at $89 and some change. To my knowledge, the Newbie Drone Whoops are the only Whoops that come with a frame warranty. That does not include the canopy, which I did break on my inside flights. Thus, that's why I have a clear canopy with yellow props and a yellow camera holder. Also, in the inside flight, because I did break the canopy, I didn't mount my camera exactly as we should. I uh, actually remounted it twice and got it in the same spot twice. So we're going to see a little bit of this top camera protection in the indoor flight footage. But you'll get to see the camera in the outdoor flight footage without this in view. Features 0802. 25,000 kV motors, and on those motors are the 31 millimeter tri-bladed AZ props, or is it AZI? The all one flight controller does have connectors, but they are smaller than we have on other 0802 and similar sized micro motors. And the VTX is 25 milliwatts, and that can be important if you fly in difficult RF environments. Battery connection is still PH20. It is their gold plated, uh, which they're sticking with. Uh, they feel that that performs adequately. It is important to note that the flight controller does have solder pads, so if you don't want to use connectors, uh, solder pads are relatively decent size for a micro all-in-one uh, with some good spacing between them as well. The version I have here is Express LRS, of course, because that's pretty much all I use these days. And our FPV camera on this particular Whoop is the Newbie Drone BI, which I think they have the BI on all their Whoops. The $89 Hummingbird V3 weighs 21.8 six grams the recommended battery is the newbie drone nitro nectar of course uh, we need to have that ph2 connection and with that battery it weighs just a touch over 30 grams we do get an extra set of props and a sheet of stickers as i mentioned in the uh, top corners of our fpv view as you see there uh, we can see a little bit of that clear canopy um, oddly enough, I, as I stated earlier, I mismounted it apparently twice, but the camera holds steady. It feels firm in there. Uh, so that's a little bit curious. I, I plan to uh, dive deeper into that after the review. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much, but do know that if it does bother you, that this is because I broke the original canopy, and when I remounted it, it this is how it appears. Uh, it looks like I've just got things, the angle I've got off a little bit, so it could be how I'm applying the camera holder, the little yellow piece that I still have on mine. Uh, the Newbie Drone develops, well, kind of, their own firmware, and something that you want to pay attention to is the OSD. I found that the OSD, while it doesn't suffer the same issues that we've seen with previous Newbie Drone Whoops, uh, it doesn't update uh, as quickly as it normally does uh, on other beta flight based whoops uh, sometimes it does go away and then it comes back uh, it might be just a moment it could be a couple of moments uh, i didn't find it to be a, a deal breaker when it came to trying to keep track of my battery voltage as you see our battery voltage is already below uh, 3.5 volts uh, one way to get past those lower uh, voltages on our 1s batteries is to use uh, the a30 the gnb27 the bt20 connector uh, hopefully you've already kind of made your choice as to which route you're going. Uh, all three of those have uh, better throughput and uh, power delivery for our whoops, especially if we're flying them relatively quickly. Uh, I should call out as something on whoops that I advocate for, but this one does not have, is adjustable camera angle. There's probably ways to adjust the camera angle in a DIY sort of environment, you know, glue it in your particular angle rather than using the traditional mount or swap out the canopy, things like that. But Typically when I'm talking about adjustable camera angle, I'm looking at having screws on the side that you can just uh, unscrew a little bit, reposition the camera, and then tighten the screws back down. That's adjustable camera angle it, to me. Also the font on the OSD is a little bit different than we do see on others as well. And when it comes to updates for the all-in-one, we are dependent upon uh, Newbie Drone to uh, publish that. Newbie Drone quads always fly pretty nice, at least the pre-tuned ones, I should say, because uh, someone might buy a frame and say, this one doesn't fly well. But anyways, uh, the pre-tuned Newbie Drone quads, they, they do spend a fair bit of time in the uh, tuning category, and I've never been disappointed by their tunes. Um, of course, that that can vary, because tunes can be very personal to the individual fun. Maybe you're more of a freestyle pilot than racer, or maybe you're a little bit more of a racer than freestyle pilot. Uh, our flight has already come to an end. You see the battery start to recover to 3.49, 3.5 volts per cell. We got two minutes and 35 seconds, which is about what you would expect with 0802, uh, 25,000 kV at this weight on a uh, 65 millimeter, 31 millimeter propped whoop. 
Now let's head outside. This is kind of a dusk flight, uh, as you can probably tell with the sun in front of us, that the sun is setting as this is an after work flight. Um, of course, flying whoops, especially something that only comes in at a total of about 30 grams. Oh, there we go. Uh, rapid fire finally synced up. That, that's specific to rapid fire. Uh, we may see it on TBS Fusion, but I don't know that we do. I have a Fusion module, but I don't find that I use it all that much. I've stuck with the rapid fire and uh, th that rolling image that can be the rapid fire getting its signal lock. Uh, so it happened this one time on this particular flight. And this is kind of how I traditionally fly whoops, you know, doing close proximity, but I do kind of spread it out from time to time, doing some longer runs across the yard. I was, I was saying about flying these outside, I've got to go for uh, lower wind days because you can't fly something at 30 grams and you have you know a 10 or 15 mile an hour wind. So after work is one of those periods where sometimes the wind does calm down. Uh, the wind in this particular case was reading at six miles an hour. Matter of fact, I was flying a different quad yesterday and I looked at the weather data uh, as far as weather.com and weather bug and it just said calm. And I was like, what is that? I have never seen it just say calm. Does that mean zero wind? You know, what does that mean? Uh, but you know you can fly whoops inside and outside the limiting factor is going to be wind uh, Also range is going to be something I don't think foot taking a whoop on a long-range flight is all that feasible I know people have done it and it's kind of a fun thing to have that whole one-way route whoop uh, Sort of flight. Uh, I don't tend to do long-range stuff I like to just fly close in uh, when it comes to that 25 milliwatts You can see how it operates here in my yard uh, I do have quite a bit of vegetation. I circle around the bush on the side of the house. I get behind the side of the house, which has uh, got siding on it that's cement-based siding as well as the brick of the chimney. Those would be the tougher reception spots uh, that you might want to look at. Uh, also, I fly race band 8, and that gets us up above Wi-Fi. That's another key to getting uh, as best possible signal that I have found. Uh, antennas make a difference. Uh, uh, your receiving module makes a difference. All those things on reception is something to pay attention to. Uh, actually, this one came with actual rates, uh, which I haven't used very much, but you might have noticed that roll was a little bit slower than my traditional uh, snap roll. I kind of like the quicker snap uh, flips and rolls. Uh, and this was flight came before I noticed that I forgot to switch from actual rates to beta flight rates. Uh, so, and then put in my custom beta flight rates. Uh, so that was a fun little tidbit for me in that I'd forgotten to do that. Now the flight has ended, you see outside, uh, flying the way I was, we do get about the same amount of flight time that we do inside. Uh, not much of a difference, but our battery has come up a little bit higher than it did inside. Here's a little short sample. Uh, you can tell here in the basement, I've got uh, many of my whoop gates out. The octagon shaped gates are from Mobili Gates. Uh, that's Mobili, as in the name, Bill E. Uh, dot com. Uh, we've got some Weebleed FPV stuff out here as well. Those straight uh, gates that you see that are perfectly straight, because uh, the ones with a little bit of an angle, though, again, those are Mobili gates. But the ones that like, kind of look like a lightsaber, those are from Weebleed FPV. Uh, the circle and the treadmill is from Weebleed FPV, and the cube gate is also from Weebleed FPV. And I found on those Weebleed FPV gates that the camera doesn't necessarily like it when it's full red with no motion. I found that that tend to blow out the camera a little bit. Also, I should draw out the fact that all the basement lights are off, as well as the doors are closed to the areas that uh, might have light. Um, when you look down that little hallway by the spare bedroom and the bathroom, those uh, lights are off and then the doors are closed back in the little area where I make these videos from. But I wanted to do some nighttime flying with uh, some LED gates, something that I like to do from time to time. It's something that I enjoy the challenge. Um, and sometimes people think that I'm a really good racer, but the fact of the matter is I don't think I'm a very good racer at all. Uh, I've seen racers and they can hit their gates much more consistently at a greater speed than I can. And that's probably in a new race path and I fly this kind of typical path in my basement quite often when I'm doing LED gate racing. But I wanted to show that to you in case you have some gates or are interested in some gates and uh, you want to do some LED gate flying, this is how the camera appears with the gates that I'm using in the color configuration with the gates that I have set up. Uh, this will be kind of the opinion part where we go over the build. So uh, the canopy I broke inside. If you didn't notice, we have hardwood floors. Uh, I do crash a lot. And then I found that I broke the canopy all up. I showed you those pieces earlier, the pieces that I were able to recover. Uh, so the camera broke. Um, in a couple of different ways, we got to break up here. This piece is kind of ready to come off. Oop, I just got another piece. Oop. 
and then this piece fell right off as well. I did lose this screw out of the back, so I replaced it with one of my own. I lost that screw on the breakage. I actually used a longer screw because I found that the post that holds this uh, was actually really weak uh, because of all the crashing that I had been doing. Uh, they use a three screw position mount. I prefer four, but in this particular case, I find that these uniformly hold these little cameras pretty still. And that's one of the reasons why I advocate for four position mount canopies is just to make sure that the camera is held still. Because uh, as whoops get beat up, they can kind of loosen up and then you can have uh, bobbles in the camera. I didn't find that to be the case uh, with all the flights I've been on with this particular one. Of course, the biggest disappointment for me is that they sent me yellow and clear. Because they do have multiple versions, and come on, who doesn't know that I like blue? Uh, and this was sent for review, uh, but they have no input on my review, as no one who uh, sends me a product for review gets any sort of input on my review, and they don't get to watch it any sooner than anyone else. So you may find that if you're, uh, as with all whoops, if you're Posts that hold your canopy and your all-in-one are starting to loosen up. Using a longer screw, if you have that, uh, it could, does come in quite handy. Of course, it can't be a blunt tip. It's going to kind of be a self-tapping screw. Uh, also, they have these little foam pads, which is really nice if you're flying in a space like mine that has hardwood floors. So if you come down and you slide across it, you're not going to be using or coming down on the screw pads. Or if you're uh, someone who like heads or one of our mini uh, Callisto or Tyrant or many Akira, many of our very talented iGal pilots, uh, good on all of you out there still participating. Incredible stuff. Uh, if you're doing a wall ride or you know various tricks inside, these pads can come in real handy to make sure you don't scratch something. Uh, whether it's furniture, your floors, your walls, your ceiling, uh, what have you. That that foam is something that I think is very unique to Newbie Drone. And I don't know if they sell this independently so that you could like buy a pack of eight or something and apply it to your own whoops. Uh, that might be something on the website that you want to check out. Uh, probably uh, outside of the color that they sent, the yellow instead of blue. I, I still am just, I'm not convinced that even gold-plated PH2 connectors are worth even a newbie's try, uh, time. I think we need to pretty much immediately switch to something else. BT20, A30 is the current generation of the GNB connector, which is BT20 compatible. Or if you happen to have old GNB27 batteries, um, all three of those connectors are going to maintain your battery voltage longer than PH20. Now, some of the voltage sag that we see could be because the batteries that I was using, I have used for years. Um, they still go up to full charge. So, And they did send two new batteries, but I can't assure you I was using the new batteries in the flights that I showed you uh, because I do have a bunch of Nitro Nectar batteries and I you know, didn't mark the ones that they sent in order to know for sure one way or another whether I was using brand new batteries or not but the ph20 connector while it's better than the ph125 that we used for quite a while when we first got started uh, we found that you know it's i think pretty unequivocal that bt20 and a30 and gnb27 are all better as far as the electrical throughput and the lack of battery resistance so your voltage is maintained for a longer period of time uh, oftentimes results in better performance as well as longer flight times um, and so you don't have so much of that battery recovery. So like in my video, I think I flew down to you know, 3.1 something volts and then it recovered all the way back up to 3.5 volts in the indoor flight. Um, so I, I, even if you're new, unless you're completely just, if you're not comfortable doing any sort of soldering and snipping, of course, um, this is one thing I think that uh, hopefully they one day they'll they will change and we'll see that. Uh, I do want to stress the fact that it has what they call an unlimited frame warranty and that can be an important factor. I'm not certain what you have to do as a customer to report the frame. Just take a picture and send it to them. Maybe send your order number to them in order to get a replacement frame. Of course, you know you don't send the whole quad in. They're going to send you a new frame and then you would then uh, reattach all the components to the new frame. So you might end up with a little bit of canopy view uh, like I did if you have to remount the camera. But uh, that that is something I think is pretty rare in FPV to have a, a frame warranty, especially as they call it an unlimited frame warranty of course that does not include the camera i am happy that they have as long as well as just about everybody else moved away from fr sky that's very problematic depending upon the firmware version that you're running and having the d8 mode availability and and range issues express lrs and really anything else is going to be better uh, than using fr sky but of course if you're locked into fr sky for budget reasons
reasons or other reasons, um, you might want to look look at the website. I'm not sure they're offering this one in uh, uh, FRSky protocols. I think something else that people might have a little bit of an issue with is the VTX and the lack of you know 100, 200, 400 milliwatts. We're seeing the higher milliwatt VTXs on all in ones now. I, th I think their purpose in maintaining that low is to have the all-in-one reliability maintain itself rather than going to those higher milliwatts and pushing more heat through the all-in-one and maybe shortening its life. They're staying with something a little bit lower. And it could also be a budgetary choice there as well as their I believe this is the least expensive brushless whoop that they have produced at a time when costs are going up. But of course... You know, there are some things that you have to accommodate for when you're looking at a budget type purchase. And I think I've covered all those in the video. But if you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. If you're interested in this product, there's also a link in the video description as well as the first pinned comment. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.